And for the Winter Olympic Games, as you mentioned, I think that is uh, actually we should see the first. The sports is sports. It should not be uh, politicized. But uh, it is sad to see you know, that the United States is trying to make the issue for their political gains. It has a lot of political intention and it seriously violates the charter of the uh, Olympics. And it is actually uh, uh, invited a lot of opposition and uh, criticism from around the world. So I do hope that people, especially in the age of globalization and we are confronting with all those transnational issues. First, we should make sure that the Winter Olympic Games is a venue for the athletes all over the world to compete. And also, secondly, it's a time for the humankind to show their resilience during this trying time to tackle all those transnational issues. And those athletes and the winter sports lovers should not be deprived of the rights you know, to have this wonderful event once in four years' time. And for the United States, actually, no one cares about whether they will be there, their officials will be there or not, because no invitation is sent to them. Or what I am looking for is for Canada and the United States and the tradition of our countries to once again come together and reaffirm our commitment to those values and to work together um, to make sure that um, our uh, to make sure that our 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 abhorrence of the way in which China conducts its um, its policy toward human rights that we are unified in expressing our opposition to that. The Olympics are a good example, but the President um, came out yesterday um, declaring a diplomatic boycott for the United States. But, you know, you have to have a tip of your hat to Prime Minister Trudeau, who surfaced that issue himself on behalf of Canada several weeks ago. Um, he, he has not made or announced a final decision yet. But the verbiage that Prime Minister Trudeau used is virtually identical to the verbiage that the United States used yesterday. And I have a, I have a high level of confidence that Canada and the United States will be aligned on our China policy, including our policy with respect to the Olympics. This is a political domain. It's a political decision which um, we respect their right to take that decision. Um, but what it also shows is that they respect uh, the right of the athletes to take part in the Olympic Games, and I think that's very important. And if you're talking about inclusivity uh, and universality, I think nothing better um, demonstrates that than the recent adoption at the UN of the uh, truce resolution. Uh, 173 uh, nations were co-signatories of the 193 co uh, countries. It was, um, it was adopted by consensus. Uh, by consensus and the wording, I won't go into the wording um, of, uh, of that resolution, but the wording very clearly uh, says how important the role of the Olympic Games uh, are in building bridges and bringing countries together, uh, recognised uh, by, by consensus, by the world, by the world's politicians. Um, so my answer to you of that specific question about universality is, um, we think that uh, countries and their, and their governments uh, are very much behind the games and very much understanding. And this isn't the first time we've had uh, we've had um, such a such support. We also had it at the G20, the G8 as well. Um, but I think very clearly they support the the aims of the Olympic Games and they understand that we are hopefully beyond politics and that we can uh, use that role of being politically neutral to bring the world together. And we uh, have to respect the decision, take political decisions taken by political bodies all around the world. So that about the United States and any other country that might decide. We can only say that we are extremely proud, happy and hopeful that all the athletes of the world the best with the artists of the world will have the opportunity to live in peace and, and friendship and brotherhood in the Olympic Village.